In this video, we're going to work through an example of finding the mass of a substance after it's gone through a certain amount of half-life decay. So I have an example written here. Xenon-133 has a half-life of 5.33 days. If 150 milligrams is placed in a sealed container for 30 days, how much Xenon-133 will we have left? Now by a sealed container, all I want to stress there is that all that means is that we're, we're not oxidizing it at all. It's not going through any other reaction other than its half-life decay. So the first step that we should do is find out how many half-lives it's gone through after 30 days. So we know that it has a half-life of 5.33 days. So we're going to find out how many half-lives are in 30 days. So we're going to start off with 30 days. And you get 5.33 is our half-life. So that'll tell us how many half-lives are in 30 days. And that's going to give us 5.63 half-lives. Great. So now that we have that, we can figure how much of this substance, how much of the xenon-133, we're going to have after 30 days. So we started off with 150 milligrams. And since we know that a half-life means that after the period, which is the, its half-life, we're going to have half the mass left. So if we had one half-life, we would simply do this, but since we don't, half-life is an exponential growth. That's how many half-lives we have that we've been through. So we're going to take one half to the how many half-lives we have power, which in our case is 5.63. We're going to multiply that out, and that'll get us 3.03 milligrams milligrams and that's how much we're gonna have left after it goes through our half-life thanks for watching if you have any questions post them up I'll try to answer any questions you guys have in future videos and uh, have a good day